All right, welcome to the first point of the double wide next gen game here in Austin, Texas. Starting off the game, double wide is on offense. On the disc, we see Max Cook on the sideline. And he goes deep immediately. Tyler DiGeralmo getting up over Michael Natenberg. Next gen starts off with a turn. Sorry we rushed into you. We are here in Silcor Park in Austin, Texas. And I'm here with my good buddy, Jackson Kelsey. Jackson. Hello, Ultimate World. I'm excited to be here. It's, uh, it's a scorcher out here right now. It's 100 degrees on the first pull. Pretty hot. Pretty hot. And Philip Haas releasing a deep ball. That's practice player Spencer Jolly with the D. Looks like that throw got caught up a little bit in the wind. True, we have some wind going on here today. It's a bit of a cross breeze. Double wide is throwing downwind on that. Down the sideline, two defenders there. Matt Rader getting the D. Another defensive opportunity to Raider, score for next gen. Raider just coming off his ECC performance with Sockeye. Have you, have you never set this up? Showing he's not tired. Janin on the sideline. Vertical stack from next gen. Janin takes a safe dump. Tommy Lamar, Mickle, up to hometown hero Will Driscoll, and Will getting a deep throw, and Tyler DiGirolamo is there. Next Gen gets a break. They take the lead 1-0. DiGirolamo getting the early D in this point on Natenberg and then finishing it off, getting up over Natenberg from the assist from Will Driscoll. Big story with double wide today. They're missing more than half their team due to injuries. Uh, they just come out, came off a tournament. A lot of their players, uh, Brody Smith and Kurt Gibson, aren't here today. So they had to pick up a lot of practice players. Yeah. Double wide already have a small roster going into ECC. It certainly doesn't help coming out, playing two days after a tournament. Not at all. Going up against a bunch of college all-stars, nonetheless. So here we go, Nick Lance with the pull, pulling downwind. Second D point for the bus. Quick movement out of a vertical stack. And there's a huck going up to Max Cook. Nick Lance is there. Max Cook able to body out Nick Lance right in front of the end zone line. Yeah, Lance made a great effort on that. He just, just couldn't quite stay on his feet. He just hung just enough for Max Cook. There's contact, but... These are two elite club players. They're not going to call a foul. Double wide ties it at ones. Interesting. That is the second forehand huck that we've seen from that sideline. Seems to be a nice spot in the field to throw from. Double wide starting with their first D point. Scott Barron set to pull. Ten 
monster outside and pull. And here we see a junk look coming from double wide. Yeah, we were talking to some of the double wide players before the game, and they were talking about trying to poach a lot on next gen, see it works out there. Rory Olaf, Orloff getting the D right outside the goal line. Barons to Matt Bennett. Oh. Chase Cunningham getting that big grab. Double wide gets a break. That was just quick, easy movement. Next gen looked like they were behind the entire point. Maybe some miscommunication on that turn. It was kind of in between Philip Haas and Thorne. And then working across the front of the goal. Easy break for double wide. They're back on serve up two to one. A very small roster here for double wide. I think they're at 15 players. 15, 15 on 15. Except for next gen they have uh, Chris Kotcher who's out with a dislocated shoulder at the moment. Second time he's done that this tour. However. And Eric Johnson isn't back. Oh, and Eric Johnson. Let's not forget about him. One of the elected captains on the next gen team. Eric Johnson will be sorely missed in this game. Yeah, he's a second year player that brings a lot of experience to a tour like this. You know, this isn't something that is very common in the ultimate world. And having experience playing these games definitely helps. Will Driscoll setting the pole, looking at another zone. This looks like a standard three-man cup. Breaks to Allison Hall on the sideline. And Allison Hall going deep. Tommy Lamar is there. Wow, what a throw. Jeez. I think that might be the best throw I've ever seen Camden throw. That was an incredible throw. Camden Allison Hall on the upwind sideline. And big old Tommy Lamar streaking deep. That's a target you want to hit. Orloff is there. He just can't gain the ground. Lamar just outruns him to the disc. You have to credit Camden Allison Hall for converting that one, though. Camden's usually known for his cutting, his speed. That time it was the 60-yard pinpoint forehand huck. Offensive point for double wide. We're looking at Jeff Loscorn. David Dane. David Melicone, also known as Salad. Spencer Jolly. Matthew Beershank. Scott Behrens. Michael Natenberg. And wearing the pie number, Matt Bennett. Natenberg with the disc. We see a vertical stack from double wide. Not able to get upfield yet. Playing the resets to the break side. But Spencer Jolly turning around, ripping it. Wow. Captain Loscorn. Full extension. Loscorn doing it all that point, <laughs> saving a flick huck that just too much edge is biting to the ground. But Loscorn makes a great heads up grab and they're reaching all the way around the mark, hitting the dead side. Hitting pie, Matt Bennett. So two early breaks for these teams. We're back on serve, double wide up three to two. You know, you would think that 
with double wide only having eight players that next gen would really be able to take it to him right away. But double wide not backing down at all. They get an early break back, convert their O points, and they have a lead 3 2 right now. Scott Barron's looking to pull. Going up wind. That one levels out, flying on the sideline. Oh, it's not coming back. Wow, they're going to get it way up the field. Looks like the observer Almost at midfield. Observer marking about midfield. Philip Haas to center it. Vertical stack. A small junk look from double wide. Maybe to stop the initial play. They're still in it. Janin on the sideline. Nice catch by Camp. Scoops it into his into the bread basket. Free child breaking to Janin and Janin. Oh. oh. Can't, can't make it happen twice. Scooped up one pass from Janin. Not going to save him a second time, though. Janin really forcing those throws. Usually he's a very consistent thrower. Scott Barron's Ooh. trying to throw a huck immediately. That did not come out very nicely. Almost looked like he got fouled. It came out so low. No call. Philip Haas picking up on the sideline, guarded by Mitchell Bennett. Free child up to DiGeralamo. Continuing up that sideline, getting over Tommy Lee's head. The wind. The wind's coming into play today. Certainly the wind is a factor, and the bus hasn't had a game since almost a week ago, last Thursday. And they, they really haven't been throwing very much. Seeing a lot of unforced turns early in this game from both sides. I believe it'll be the team that cleans it up. We'll take it early in this half. Disc goes up. Oh, ho, ho, ho. double zero, Michael Bennett. Snatches it right out of the air, right over Phil Haas. Mitchell Bennett, a strong player out of Texas. He captains for the Texas Tufts team with next gen player Will Driscoll. I believe he's a practice player with double wide. He's trying to make a case for being a permanent player with double wide. That was a nice grab. Right in front of us here in the booth, I thought Philip Haas had position the entire way. And then Mitchell making a strong play towards the disc. That's just, that's great cutting. That forehand flick from that side, it's been going up a lot. It's true. It's just sitting nicely for the players. Double Y takes the lead 4-2. Blady pull from Tank. And we see a horizontal stack for the first time. Double wide sticking in that zone set. Looks like they've matched up now. They're playing pretty poachy though. It's definitely a poachy man. Taking time to get on the mark. Alex Lohr now on the sideline. Up to Mitchell. Mickled out to Driscoll. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Mr. Will I Am Driscoll. Sky's his captain from double wide. That's, that's bragging rights right there. He caught that six inches 
above Lost Corn. Look at that. <laughs> Trying to get a Patagonia play of the game. Will Driscoll has really become one of my favorite receivers downfield. Definitely. I think he gets up higher than almost anyone else on the team. He's like six, I think he's six four. I can't wait for the club season, the college season to start and see Driscoll go up against Tyler DiGirolamo. <laughs> you know there will be some talking. Four three next in D line, down a point. Hoping to get it back. Matt Raider set to pull. Looking pretty sharp with the tucked in shirt. <laughs> Misses his footing there. Didn't release a disc, so no offsides call. That's incredible body control <laughs> to not throw that disc. Wow. And that. Will. Is it? Oh, almost pinpoint. You got to think that the stumble before the first pull definitely had something to do with that next pull going out of bounds. It's a mental game. That's all pulling is. Trying to go with a huge inside out. It just tails and rides the wind. So double wide to take it right at the brick. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that. Have you, Topher? Fall over on the pole? And not pull? I can't say that I have. I remember last year, Nikki Spiva, he fell over but still pulled the disc. <laughs> Raider able to hold on. Against the zone, double wide march downfield. Solid outside the end zone. And Scott, Scott Barons. Veteran player on this team. He can throw a 30 yard inside out flick to that dead side front corner of the end zone. No problem. Is so Matt Bennett for a second goal? I got, it's actually Mitchell Bennett, or no, Matt Bennett, his second goal of the game. Matt Bennett and Mitchell Bennett are related. And double wide. They're not showing they're tired from ECC at all. They're up 5-3. Well, to be fair, only eight of these players played at ECC. True. But they had to play a lot of points. Still, you wonder how much camaraderie this team has that's out on the field right now. I mean, a lot of them are practice players. Some of them probably local pickups from from Austin coming out and showing the College All-Stars, a team that's beat Ironside 15-13. They're up 5-3. Lascorn's pull pushes pushes the bus all the way to the back of their end zone. Camp on the sideline. Again, they're looking at this poachy defense. Next Gen's just not moving it quickly enough. They're nearly impossible to stop when they move the disc quickly. But Raiders holding it right now. Raider going with a leading hammer, high stall count. And Thorne maybe thought the player behind him was going to get a hold of it. It's unfortunate, but here's double wide with a chance for another break. And that one floats. Just rides the wind. Right over the head of Ben Garrett. Another flick hug from Spencer Jolly. That one getting a little more hang time, but too much hang time in that case. Next gen offense. Another chance at this disc. Trying to keep the game within one. Philip Haas. 
right away, not wasting any time. Raider's there, two defenders, and Raider oh. gets a hand on it. Looks like we have a foul called. Doesn't seem to be contested. Raider between two defenders is there. Plenty of contact and uncontested by Stephen Jolly, Spencer Jolly, excuse me. Easy break. Raider finds Colin Camp in the end zone. Quick break. Not really the prettiest point from next gen. Not the best ultimate we've seen. But it was effective. Philip Haas's backhand. The wind has died down, but that's still an upwind throw. Yeah, that was big. Savvy enough to keep it floating, knowing that Matt Raider is strong in the air. And Matt Raider was there. Almost gets a full hand on it, but the contact causes him to drop it. Not a bad situation to be in. Not too bad. One of your best deep receivers. Nice high floaty disc. Get another look at it here. I don't know. It wasn't contested, but looked like he might have dropped it afterwards. However, Next Gen scores, they cut the lead to one. Lost going with the disc. Beer shank on the sideline, centers it. Looks like that was trying to go up field to Scott Barons. Misses its target. Now Dylan Freechild has it on the sideline, puts a flick oh. hook. Driscoll. <laughs> Just wide open. Lost Corn did not care to play defense on that point. He was trailing in by 35 yards at least. Allison Hall with a nice D, finds Free Child, and Lost Corn just looks lost. Second game of the goal for Driscoll. Will Driscoll, the hometown favorite here in Austin. I'm sure he has a lot of his college teammates and college friends from the University of Texas here to watch this game. A double wide player of his own, always Always some interesting team dynamics when you're playing your home team. <laughs> Definitely. Where the captains before the game jokingly saying their strategy to beat Next Gen was to force Debbie. Of course, Debbie is Will Driscoll's nickname. Get and the disc in Driscoll's hands and watch him turn it over. Looks like Driscoll came to play today, though. Two goals, a big sky. An assist, too. An assist? I think he had He's that first filling up hook. the stat line. Jimmy Mickles pull going out, out of bounds. bounds. Brick mark for double wide. Roy Orloff to center the disc. Sal does his dump. Orloff played at uh, Santa Barbara in his college days. He was really the face of the team for at least two years. A nice break to get it solid on the sideline. Ooh, that somehow gets to wow. Mitchell Bennett. Nick Lance also trailing on defense. Matt Bennett. Quick movement. Orloff going all the way around. Not sure if that was the intended dump, but Salad makes a good recovery. Keeps that disc alive. It's going to go back to Orloff. These practice players for double wide are really running hard. And Max Cook, bit of a bobble. 
Reels it in. Good point for the double wide offense. Yeah, they're clearly not intimidated by the next gen all stars. Lots of quick movement. Yeah, we get a little stagnant when Orloff or Salad had it. But when the practice players practice players had it, definitely moving quickly. It's still 100 degrees here in Austin. Again, Scott Barron's with the pole. That one floating near the sideline. Bounces Ooh. just in. Thorne's going to take it on the sideline. Thorne thought it was going to be out, signaling out. Just stays in. Camp's been cutting well this game. Resets to Tommy Lee around to Thorne. Driscoll with an eye on that line. <laughs> Debbie with it. This is what Double Wide wanted. Now Thorne and Thorne going to Jannon. Wow. Good. Jacob put. Jannon is so fast. That is one of my favorite things to watch on this whole tour is Jacob Jannon run down a disc. Especially when it's a little blady. So those ones are falling really fast and he just strides all the way out. You can see he's putting his all into it. Almost falls over, he's going so fast. And we're talking about trends of the flick huck coming towards our camera. On the flick hucks going away, I've seen a lot of throws being thrown from that far sideline going over to the dead side on the trailing edge. Yeah, there was that one that uh, Max Cook almost had, or mm -hmm. he almost dropped. Mm -hmm. Uh, then the one from Jacob, and then Camden had his throw earlier in the game. It was definitely the best of the ones that we've seen. Then Dylan Freechild also found Will Driscoll. Right, right. Forehand hucks are kind of the, the trend of this game so far. Yeah, and those forehands that are trailing to the dead side are really just leaving no chance for the defender. Even if they have that position on the live side, the disc is falling away from them. Very advantageous for the offensive cutter. Double wide offense. Back making moves. Spencer Jolly with the disc. Spencer Jolly putting He's up another just huck. Been putting it all day long. That one to no one though. Seen a lot of good quick releases. Just a catch and throw. But sometimes if you're not used to playing with a player like that, the cuts just won't be there. And yeah. that is one of those times. Yeah, he looks like he just wants to take the shots right now. Don't know if that was the best best decision. It's next gen's disc. Lance on the sideline, up to DiGeralamo. Just outside his end zone. And Freechild, wow. nice inside-out backhand. That is a perfect throw. Freechild prefers his backhand over his forehand. And that was just perfect. Steps, releases it low. It cuts right into the wind. Throws it to the leading goal scorer on tour, Tyler DiGirolamo. Kick spike. Next Gen takes the lead 7-6. It's so hot out here, the teams just have no energy. No one's erupting on the sidelines. Almost looks like they're working out there. Well, hot day in two teams of 15. 
Only one person is getting a sub, basically. It's got to be taxing. Hopefully it cools off in this evening game. Yeah, I'm kind of glad we're sitting over here in this shade, Topher. Rarely seen Philip Haas pull. Maybe Raider respected that backhand that Haas was throwing earlier. Fielded by Mitchell Bennett, pushed up field. Lost corn marked by Driscoll. You got to think that Driscoll called that matchup. He wants to guard his captain. And Scott Barron's rare miss throw from him. A little too far for Beershank. And, and, next, and turns it right back. Better field position for double wide than if they had completed the pass. Now Rory Orloff has the disc. Oh. oh. Wow. Didn't see the poach. Thorne's little frame, probably hiding behind Matt Rader or something. Just reaches out there. Whoop. I'll take that. Now next in with 70 yards to go to take half. This time Thorne connects with Mickle. Back to Thorne, vertical stack. Jimmy Mickle's really been playing solid for the bus this year. He had a few miscues last year, a couple drops at the end of the chain game last year, but this year he's really playing solid. Not taking too many risks, hitting the open throws. And there we see Raider trying to jump in, not getting it. He'll flip it to William Driscoll, blowing up in his hometown. Three goals, one assist. Next gen down 5 3 at one point. They take half with a 5-1 run. I think they uh, they just got warmed up. I think the bus is going to start rolling. Good first half. Two small teams. We'll see who's able to grit it out in the second half. We are going to take our 10-minute break. We hope you join us back here in Austin. We will see you in a bit. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. Next Gen All-Stars taking on Austin Double Wide. So far, a great half, couple breaks. And next in coming out on top, breaking in the last point to take half eight to seven. Here starting on offense, going downwind. Philip Haas receiving the pull on the sideline. Thorne, Haas, we're seeing again this junk look that Double Wide has been throwing all day. And Thorne, nice little inside out flick going over the cup. Camp on the sideline. Haas, Free Child, Tommy Lee. DiGeralmo going around. That's the outside a great and throw. That is a great throw. Keeping it inbounds. The backhand blade. Rarely not one, seen. Not one you see very often. It's going to drop it in perfectly to pit teammate Alex Thorne. That's the connection we see often. Either DiGeralamo to Thorne or Thorne to DiGeralamo. It won them a national championship this year in the college game. Strong offensive point from the All-Stars. Making short work of the zone, moving the disc quickly, and now they're up nine to six.
First offensive line for double wide coming out of halftime. Rory Orloff, Max Cook, David Salad, Melancon, Jeff Lascorn, Matt Bennett, Matt Beershank, and Spencer Jolly. The pole's gonna sail out of bounds. I will see what double wide has done to their offense to get back into this game. Orloff at the brick. Vertical stack immediately going to the live side. Scuba over the top. After finding the force, next in doing some containment, but oh, Matt Mitchell trying to go around to Rory Orloff. I think that's the difference in this game right now. Those throws, when Double Wide was leading this game, they were working. But right now, they're just a little too far. Nice effort from Orloff. And in the second half, a chance for a break for the All-Stars. Allison Hall has the disc on the sideline going all the way across to Raider. Jannon. Haas. Oh. Debbie. <laughs> Forcing Will Driscoll. <laughs> Worked this time for double wide. That disc popping right through his hands. Now about half of the field to go. Rory Orloff with the disc. And that one just dropped into the win. There was no effort on that throw. He didn't even pivot. Stepped out and pretty much dropped it on the ground. Woo. Matt Rader, Tommy Lamar with steps, tailing away and he can't get it. A little too blady. We saw earlier in the game, if that huck is gonna come from that side of the field, it's really gotta be inside out to stay in that wind. You can see it's just dying. No chance for big old Tommy Lamar to come down with that. All that edge knocks it down, and here we go. Third attempt for the double wide offense to score. They're moving the ball quickly until Salad. That is a beautiful throw. Wow. Salad, always known for his throws. In college, he played with Texas. He could pretty much find his receiver anywhere on the field. Throws to Max Cook, easy. You're gonna be saying that a lot from double wide this year. A pretty turnover heavy point. It seemed like that was something that was happening in the first half of the game too. Both teams just kind of miscuing. And coming out of halftime, again, we see some missed throws. In the first half, Next Gen was able to clean up their play and it really showed that they took half, eight to six. But if both teams just start playing sloppy like that, Double Wide could fight back into this game. Ben Garrett set to pull for Double Wide. I think the, the ultimate community really would have liked to have seen Brody and Kurt out here today. Right, we haven't even mentioned the star power that Double Wide is missing in this game. I mean, they're throwing 50 to 60% of the goals for Double Wide in the club series. Two dominant players, huge flicks, pinpoint backhands, great deep receivers. 
Kurt played with Revolver at Worlds. He now has a World Championship. Wow, Nick Lance going deep from the handler position, getting past the cup. This is a great throw from Tommy Lee. He just leans back, puts it out there nice and flat. The Callahan Award winner, he's not going to drop that. Nick Lance, also a great fact that I found out while sleeping in his bedroom the other day. Nick Lance. <laughs> Please tell me, Topher. This is interesting. In 2006, Nick Lance got third in the horseshoe competition in the state of Texas. Wow. Wonderful athlete. Now taking his talents to <laughs> the ultimate Frisbee field. <laughs> he does, he, in his backyard, he actually has horseshoes set up. So clearly, he's been throwing things for a long, long time. Has to practice. It, just the things that you learn on the tour, staying at all these wonderful parents' houses, getting a glimpse into the early lives of some of the players. It's true. Double wide back on offense. Lost Sing corn connection. right away. Going to Pie. Pie just roasts Jimmy Mickle deep. I don't like that matchup. I don't like Mickle on a smaller, quicker guy. Jimmy guards bigger receivers. He's not going to close the gap. His turnover isn't fast enough. And right there, double wide, scores with ease. Center from the pull. Lost corn. Winds up on the backhand. Makes it easy for Mitchell Bennett, or no, Matt Bennett. Double White's hanging around. It's 10-8. Game is not even close to over. Couple miscues from Next Gen. Double White is right back in it. Certainly, and it just goes to show there's a lot of talk from about double wide that is completely focused on the players. We were talking about Kurt Gibson, Brody Smith, and what everyone's talking about this year, Tim Garrett returning to double wide. There's a lot of talk about that, but as we see today, double wide also is exhibitioning a great program. A lot of good players, a lot of great leadership. And in this game with only eight men from their roster team being down eight to ten a better showing than we've seen from some of the earlier club teams with a full roster next gen taking a lot of passes on that Oof. Ben Garrett almost with that D Tommy Lamar breaking it through a nice line presence from Philip Haas. Colin Camp with the forehand to DiGirolamo. Not really known for his throws, but that one was easy. 20 yards, streaking DiGirolamo, no problem. Tommy Lamar gets low. The disc flutters. Phil Haas right there, toes the line. We see double wide start that point with his zone defense. And as soon as they fall into man, backhand breaks galore for the next gen offense. Finally setting up an easy forehand flick. So far teams have been trading this point. This half, excuse me. Here we go, up the field. We 
So Losco getting it on the sideline to Matt Bennett. High count. Centers to his brother, Mitchell Bennett. The Bennett brothers came to play today. I don't think I've seen them have a miscue yet. I take that back. Uh, Matt Bennett did have one flick that he turned over. But besides, oh. <laughs> oh. That one coming out low. And a as a defender, you absolutely hate that. You have your guy guarded deep, and the throw comes out low. Really low. And the deep, deep offender comes back and gets the disc. Well, Unlucky. Not, Unlucky. Yeah, Lost Corn not happy with the way the offense is looking. He calls a timeout. So we are going to take a timeout here, too. Be back with you in just a minute. Perfect. Well, a great day, great evening here in Austin, Texas. Double wide, knocking on the door for another offensive point. Lost Corn with the disc. The temperature has dropped here three whole degrees, so now it's only 97 degrees. Ooh. Oh, Nick Lance, great D there. He baited that throw. Allison Hall on the sideline. Running out of options. Wide open Dylan Freechild. Lance up to Freechild. Deja Rolimo. And DiGirolamo going with the hammer, hammer. and running oh. out of space. Was he in bounds? He looked like he might have been in bounds I, right there. I think he jumped from in bounds. I think he was in bounds. At what point? When he jumped. Oh Don't yeah. Don't really have a good look from that angle. Good attempt going for the greatest on the hammer out the back of the end zone. A somewhat questionable decision, but not the worst decision. He had a player, he just couldn't convert. Now double wide offense, moving the ball quickly. Roy Orloff. That's a nice flat throw. Finding Matt Beershank. One turnover already for the double wide offense, and they're not going to make a mistake a second time. Nice and flat. A lot of quick movement. Unfortunate for the bus, as that would have put them up four points. It would have been the first break we saw in the second half. Double wide, though, still holding strong. They're just hanging around. That's all they're doing. They're just, they're not letting the lead increase to three. They're just keeping it at two, not giving up any breaks. Next Gen has a couple more mistakes. Double wide is right there. Barron's with the pull. They've been centering to Haas a lot this game. Oh, if that floats, Colin Camp in chase. Great layout oh. catch. Colin Camp getting it done. Mr. Eight goal himself. Oh, wow. This is nice. Philip Haas on the downwind. Almost slides on top of the manhole down there. Just the perfect view. Short offensive point for next gen. Always great to have your offense on and then off the field. Next gen takes the lead by three here. They've been getting turnovers on double wide, just not been able to convert.
Double wide offense, though. Doing great so far. On the line now, Spencer Jolly. David Melancon. Jeff Loscorn. Rory Orloff. Michael Natenberg. And then Matt and Mitchell Bennett. Matt Bennett. Centering to Loscorn. Tank is just so solid with the disc. Rarely turns it over. It's number 18, Michael Nattenberg. Roy Orloff catching that one right on the line. Back to Mitchell Bennett. What kind of offense are they running right now? A lot of movement to the handlers, it seems. Unable to really break anything upfield. <laughs> Whatever they're doing, it's working right now. Next Gen's just trailing. Great lifting high release backhand. It's lost corn to Orloff. Still hanging around, not going anywhere. Double wide really getting to that point in the game where if they're gonna make a move to win, they're gonna have to make it soon. 12-10, a break here would put them in a great spot. If next gen offense is able to score, make that 13-10. Yeah, 13-10 is a lot bigger de deficit to come back from than 12-11. This is a really big point for double wide. Not starting it off. That well pulls it out of bounds. We see Spencer Jolly playing on the D line. Normally see him on the offense. Maybe one of those strategic switches. And oh, Tommy Lee. One throw. It's like there was a foul called. Out of that horizontal stack. Going to camp deep again. Camp must be feeling it this game. Double wide handlers. Handler guards kind of poaching in the middle of the lane. Gosh, Nick Lance's forehand is so good. From 40 yards and in, it is, it doesn't miss by a foot on 95% of his passes. Lee breaking it to DiGirolamo. Back to Lee. Raider. Lance. Back to Raider, doing a good job working the short field. Looks like there was a pick called. Girolamo leading Colin Camp. Colin Camp. I don't know if he can score eight goals in this one, but he's sure making a run at it. Colin Camp, second point in the row for the bus. Again, almost on the manhole cover. He's got a particular spot in the field. I mean, some players just <laughs> find their niche and they run with it. Just like in basketball, a shooter just likes that spot and he keeps <laughs> going back. <laughs> 
temperature still running at a cool 97 degrees. I do mean that when I say that cool. It's a very cool 97 degrees. A very. Compared to what the bus was feeling like earlier today, this is a this is the dream. Jimmy Nickel with the monster bowl. I guess that's what he's famous for. Tank. Couldn't break it to the dead side. He had it a receiver open. Steven Barings not gonna catch up to it. Great opportunity for the next in defense here. 70 yards to go to get a break to put them within one. They've only had a few opportunities in the second half to get a break. Let's see if they're able to capitalize on it now. Yeah, last time they were moving the disc up easily. 10 yards here, 15 yards there. Tyler DiGirolamo makes a great cut. He's five, five yards outside of the end zone. And then he hammers and throws it away. That time Nick Lance getting fouled. He's gonna get the disc back. Looks like he has 70 yards to go. Vertical stack from the bus. Thorn reset on the break side. Nice flick hitting Tommy Lamar and Tommy Lamar going for the huck. Looks like there's a foul called on that. Looked like a foul to me. David Melancon gets his foot in there, but it's gonna stay. Nickel with the disc on the sideline. Holstering the huck, looking for free child. Oh, somehow getting that one on the backhand side. And Nick Lance flicks. Tyler DiGirolamo's there. Wow. Reels it in just before the line. And a break for next gen puts them up 14 to 10 in this second half. That goal from DiGirolamo, he makes it look pretty easy, but we can see why they're all stars. It would really be difficult for the average college player to make that play. They'd probably be making a huge bid and come up a little short, but DiGirolamo uses all his strength and tracks that one down easily. Barely has to lean forward for it. We'd like to take a brief moment to thank our sponsors on the 2012 Next Gen Tour, Discraft and Patagonia, helping us run this bus. We'd also like to thank Elemental Technologies, responsible for all the broadcasts you're gonna get on the 2012 Tour, as well as Labor Day and any other Next Gen Network productions you will see in the future. Here at 1410, Mickle, big outside end pull, downwind. Double wide, looking at game point. Rory Orloff, high count, gets it off to Cook. Cook to Pauly, <laughs> he's not scared to put it deep. Lots of contact, however, no foul called. Ben Garrett getting a whole hand on that on the first attempt, and then unable to get that second attempt. And with a game point possession, Jimmy Mickle calls a timeout. We are gonna call a timeout of our own and be back for the ending of this game. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. Next Gen All-Stars with a game point possession going against Austin double wide. Jimmy Mickle 70 yards to go to end this game. It's like a set play here. Oh, 
Raider on the dead side, up to camp. Philip Haas, we've seen some big throws out of Haas today. That time he opts for the dump. Nickel to Haas. Getting it up to Mickle and Mickle going deep. Camden, Camden Allison Hall on running his it down. Horse. And no one's going to catch Camden Allison Hall. And they're going to take this game 15 to 10. Oh boy, is he fast. Pretty good effort from Double Wide today. I wouldn't have been surprised if Next Gen would have won 15 5, really. They had eight players playing from their current team. Missing out on two star, huge star players, Kurt and Brody. They put up 10 points on the Next Gen All-Stars. I mean, two big star players with Kurt and Brody, but let's not forget Tim Garrett's missing from this roster. Kieran Thomas, transfer from Chain, missing from this roster. Steven Franchise Presley. Presley, he's a big one. Certainly, we will see double wide at Labor Day coming in full force. A strong team losing in semifinals at Nationals last year. The last two years. Yeah, they're going to come out with a vengeance later in this season. Oh, boy. We'd like to thank our crew today. Kimber Coles killing it with the instant replay. We finally have our replay machine back. Hope you all enjoyed that at home. Ben Bowie, Brian Bedord. Our other camera lady, guest camera lady today, Katie Riley, standing on the bus. <laughs> Taking one for the team. It was pretty hot up there earlier, folks. 100 degrees standing on top of that bus, not an easy thing to do. Our observers, Alex Irwin, Anne Marie Wisman, Greg Sitz, and Jimmy Moore. I think we also, we have to give a shout out to Kevin Minderhout. If it wasn't for him, none of this would happen. Of course, veteran on the tour, and with me today, Jackson Kelsey. As for myself, it was an honor to be here today. I'm Topher Davis. We will see you with an exciting game next Friday in San Francisco, taking on world champion Revolver. It won't be one to miss. I can't ben, wait. Take us out.